So today I'm going to start lecture 22, which is about the quasi-Newton methods, and I'm Dr. Ranjan Ganguly. Now quasi-Newton methods are some of the most useful methods in optimization, and essentially these methods are often found in software libraries, and one can say that they are some of the most widely used optimization methods besides the conjugate gradient methods. Now these methods essentially extrapolate on the Newton's method and the basic premise here is that instead of using the Hessian matrix like in the Newton method, you try to create an approximation for this matrix and use this particular approximation in a formula which is very similar to the Newton method. And how this approximation is developed is by using changes in the design vector x, changes in the gradient vector c, which happen during the past iterations. So as you are going from k 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, k minus 2, k minus 1, you have been calculating all the gradient vectors and you have the design vector at each of these k's. And there is a lot of information here in terms of the second derivative, which can be extracted and used to create an estimate of the Hessian matrix. So one of the important things is that whenever you create an update formula to approximate this H matrix, you must ensure that the H matrix remains symmetric and positive definite. Symmetry, of course, comes from the basic nature of the H matrix because of the partial derivative information. And positive definiteness is, of course, required to maintain that the descent direction is uh, the Descent direction is a direction which satisfies the search condition and which satisfies the descent direction. So if you do not have positive definiteness, then the search direction is not guaranteed to be a descent direction. That means C dot D is less than zero. Now the basic theory behind the quasi-Newton method can be grasped by considering that there is a relationship between the Newton method and the second method, and this will become clear if we look at the one-dimensional problem. So we will do that now. So essentially now we recreate the Newton method in one direction or in one dimension. So we expand the function f of x as a quadratic approximation. So here you can see the Taylor series expansion, f of x plus d, and here you have the first term, you have the first derivative term, and you have the second derivative term. So you will all realize that these terms are similar to the gradient term and the Hessian matrix term. Now, very similar to what we did for the Newton method, you differentiate this function f with respect to d. So you get f dash x plus d f double dash x equal to zero. So you set the gradient equal to zero, and then you can calculate d is minus f dash x by f double dash x by solving for this equation. So this is essentially your search direction, and therefore I can write the Newton method in one dimensional as follows, xk plus one equals xk minus f dash xk by f double dash xk. So again, you can clearly see the similarity between this formula and what we had for the multidimensional case where you had the gradient vector and the Hessian matrix. So the F dash is similar to the gradient vector and the F double dash is similar to the Hessian matrix. So now, as we discussed before, the problem in the Newton method lies in calculating this second derivative because this is very computationally cumbersome. So what we are going to do is that we are going to use the finite difference approximation. So we use the backward difference formula. So we replace the second derivative in the Newton method 
by this formula. So again in finite difference what you do is you perturb the function slightly from xk minus 1 to xk and similarly you divide it by the difference between xk and xk minus 1 and these numbers are kept sufficiently small and then you get a good estimate of this derivative here. So again this backward difference approximation is used for the second derivative of f. So now if you look at the Newton method in one dimension and you replace the f double dash term with this term here, you get this particular formula and this is known as the second method for minimizing a 1D function. So you are able to see that you can get a reasonably good formula which does not require you to calculate the second derivative information. So this second formula is a formula which uses f dash and the value of x. So the f double dash term has been removed. Now what we are going to do is we are trying to extend this method to multi dimensions. So just a few points before we embark on that. We see that the Newton method converges quadratically. The second method converges super linearly with the rate of convergence which is equal to the golden ratio 1.618. So that's one more place where the golden ratio pops up. Now the second formula which is this formula here which came from the backward difference derivative can be written in this form. So all I have done is I have brought xk minus xk minus term to the left hand side here and expanded this particular equation out. Now we immediately make a jump from this one dimensional space to the multidimensional space. So the f double dash becomes the Hessian matrix. The f dash becomes the gradient. So essentially this is the second formula in multidimensional space. So this is something to keep in mind. And here you are starting to see the thinking behind the quasi Newton method that I could somehow estimate h of k by using ck minus ck minus 1 and xk minus xk minus 1. So essentially a kind of finite differencing approach could be used here to get the derivative. So this is nothing but an extrapolation of this second formula in one dimension to n dimension. And so we are going to use this particular thinking now. So this condition is sometimes known as the second condition. And in general, what we do is that when you create a quasi Newton method, you do not actually calculate the Hessian matrix. Instead, you say that you are going to create a Hessian matrix or an estimate of the matrix, which we, we will call as B of K. And this B of K must satisfy the second condition. So you see that these two equations are very similar and we have simply replaced h of k by b of k and this also satisfies the second condition. Now to get a physical feel of this let us look at a quadratic function such as this f of x here and I can write a x k minus x k minus 1 and then extend it out here by putting a minus b and a plus b and immediately this gives me ck minus ck minus 1, remembering that the derivative of this function can be obtained and that would be ax minus b and that would be ck. Okay, so now if you look at this axk minus xk minus 1 term, this is similar to the left hand term here, bk xk minus xk minus 1. Similarly, the right hand side is ck minus ck minus 1 which is here also ck minus ck minus 1. So we can see that for a quadratic function, the A matrix or the Hessian of the quadratic function is this value bk here. So bk will become A for a quadratic function. So therefore A is the Hessian of a quadratic function and satisfies the second condition. Now for a general nonlinear function, this interpretation holds locally in an approximate manner. 
So quasi-Newton methods, they try to create this matrix BK so as to approximate the behavior of the H matrix by using the change in gradient and the change in design using the second condition formula. And methods which basically try to get this particular approximation B of K, which satisfies the second condition are known as the direct update methods. So these are the methods which are very important and powerful and we are going to now consider in detail next. Now in these methods, the H matrix is typically started from some value B of zero, which could be the I matrix. And then you keep building this matrix as K becomes larger. Now several such methods are there and several such formulas are there, but they are based on very similar logic. So we will discuss the general logic. The two key pieces of information here are the change in the design vector, that is xk plus one minus xk. And this we denote by a vector sk. Then there is a change in the gradient vector, that is ck plus one minus ck. And this we denote by the vector yk. So the second condition then becomes bk into xk minus xk minus one equals ck minus ck minus one. So this is the second condition. Now I can write this second condition in more compact form by using this particular definition. So essentially you have the B matrix into the change in the design vector S and this is equal to the change in the gradient vector here. So now once you have that, we can replace K by K plus one and so we get this formula. So this is the typical formula which we use for the second condition. So essentially we are trying to create this matrix BK plus one using SK and YK. So essentially any formula which is proposed for these kind of direct update methods will satisfy this second condition BK plus one SK equals YK. For example, consider a simple formula such as this. If you substitute this formula into the second condition, that is you multiply both sides by SK, you get this value here. And essentially these two being scalars, they will cancel out and so you will get YK here. So you see that this particular proposed formula satisfies the second condition. So essentially the concept here is these type of formulas, which we will discuss in detail in our previous or, or our next lectures, essentially try to build this BK matrix by using the prior BK matrix starting from B of zero, which could be I and the information used is the prior matrix and the vectors YK and SK which are of course there with you because they represent the change in the gradient and the change in the design. So the approximate matrix B is obtained by using only two sets of information change in gradient and change in design, which is there with you at each point K. So to create a very general formulation, these kind of direct methods, you start the method with B0 is I and all direct quasi-Newton methods are based on this kind of formula that BK plus one is BK plus Delta BK. And this Delta BK is what represents the change in this matrix. And as you change this matrix, you start from I, but we will see that for quadratic functions, you essentially can build up the Hessian matrix with time. So that is the basic power of this method that you are no longer required to calculate the H matrix, but you can create the H matrix by starting from I and then building up like this. So again, you can clearly see that this method is extremely powerful because it is trying to get the Hessian matrix. And also as you are getting closer and closer to the minimum point, you are getting the Hessian matrix and it is going to become better and better. And of course, as we have discussed before, these methods must guarantee symmetry and positive definiteness so that this method progresses well. 
and then convert just to a good solution. So in the next lecture, we are going to discuss one of the very powerful methods in optimization, and that's the BFGS method. So I will see you in my next lecture.